and my life just completely stopped. And they said, you may never play basketball again, you may never live a normal life again. Obviously I was in massive shock, I was quite sort of scared in a way, not knowing really anything about leukaemia or chemotherapy or fatigue. They kept throwing these words out at me and I sort of just didn't understand any of them at the time. They, they said I wouldn't be able to play basketball for three and a half years because that's how long my, my chemotherapy was. I went from playing basketball, doing my GCSEs, to right at the beginning of my treatment I was in hospital for a month and because of my chemotherapy, it suppressed my immune system to basically nothing. So I wasn't allowed to leave the hospital bed uh, or my room, in fact, for the first two or three weeks. I wasn't even allowed to open the window. So I became sort of submerged in this room, which for someone that's quite outgoing and active, to just be sitting in a bed, walking around a room for 24 hours a day was quite tough to take on my, on my mind or more than my body. My fatigue started from pretty much day one. I was sleeping a long time, majority of the day. And then from then on, when I started having the full-on chemotherapy, they started mentioning this word fatigue. You know, at the time I sort of took it, and I was like, okay, I've got fatigue, you know, this is, this is what it is. And especially when it became into maintenance, I started to feel the, the effects of fatigue and how I would wake up just randomly one day and feel just as if I need to go back to bed. I was super tired just all the time. I would, if I had to get up early one day, I would be in bed by sort of 12 o'clock having a two hour nap. Or I'd go to school, do two hours of school, and then I'd come home and, and pass out asleep. I made sure I planned my days. I knew I should still push through the boundaries, not too much where it became a health issue, but to the point where I knew I would live a normal life, be happy. So us as a family, we made sure that um, I kept on doing things because my mum, she was saying fatigue breeds fatigue. So if I didn't do anything, I'd feel worse the next day and more tired. But I made sure I got out of bed and I was up and about the house or went for a short walk just to make sure that I was keeping myself active. It was, it was very difficult, if I'm being honest, um, because I've obviously known you as a very active and very uh, busy and sports person over the years. And uh, when we used to go away, you, you wouldn't sit still. You'd be like, because we weren't doing any sports, so uh, it, to see you like being very lethargic and even struggling to get into the, and out of bed was very difficult. But you had that good sport brain, the focus of trying to you know, get through it and, and be positive. And that's really key, is being positive. I had to watch my diet and certain things I was eating. I had to think about what I was allowed to do. I went back to the gym to do very light resistance work to sort of build a little bit of base muscle back. But I had to make sure I did that on off-peak time. So I spoke to the gym and said, when's busy, when's not busy, when's a good time? Sort of there's less infection risk because there's less people have used the equipment, there's less people in the gym. Basketball was taken away from me. So I took up golf to keep my competitive spirit, to keep my sort of sport mentality going because I wasn't allowed the impact of basketball. So I wasn't allowed to go clubbing or anything. But I then went and got myself a cinema card and I was going weekly to that. So I would go on a Monday when there's no one there and I'd go to a film that's maybe at the end of its release date or whatever. So there's no one in the, in the cinema. So again, there's no affection risk. A lot of people just shut down and say, there's no way of me living a normal life. And actually there is. You've just got to find that way of doing it. it makes it bearable for the time you're on treatment. I finished treatment on the 25th of June, 2016, after completing three and a half years of chemotherapy. My body wasn't in great shape, but I knew I had the goal of going to uni and getting basketball back. I started at Loughborough University on the 4th of September, 2016. I was terrified. I was not ready to leave home. I was in, it was not a good time, but I knew that leaving home and getting a new set of friends had no idea of what happened previously. They were treating me as if I was a normal kid. I was doing two half days of uni, really. And at the end of both of them, I was going back to bed straight away and sleeping for two, three hours. I got used to that. I then stepped up to three half days. Once I got used to that, I stepped up to two full days. And then I slowly progressed. And by Christmas, I was doing a full uni schedule, no problem. And then on top of that, 
I was doing training for basketball. It's been, what, four or five years since I've played a competitive basketball game, so that's the final thing to tick off. And once that's done and everything, there is no, nothing that cancer has got hold of me anymore, so. It feels like it's another family. It doesn't yeah. feel like it's connected to us anymore. Like yeah. The amount we've changed and moved on as people, I feel like we're completely different now mm. and for the better as well. Because you're almost drawing a line under it and moving on. And you're sort of like, yes, it happened. It was one of those things. And now you're, you're moving forward. But at the same time, I don't look badly upon it. I'm not sort of quite happy it happened in a way. And we just, we've all moved on and better for it, better people than we were before we went in. So. We don't look at it in a way that makes us feel resentful for anything. We never say, why us? <laughs> we just accept it and enjoy what we've got. <laughs>